All right. I guess it's time for Ocarina of Time now. So I heard we had a file name incentive, right? We certainly did. Are we ready to know the winner? Uh, sure, yeah. With $1,532 raised, the winning file name is... Lonk. I mean, <laughs> Lonk. Thank you, everyone, for your amazing generosity. And that's in all caps, or...? Uh, no, just a capital L. Ah, okay. There you go. Okay, so I guess we can just start the run. We have a pretty long intro, so let's just do that. I will count down from five, okay? So five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, so I'm Spittle San. I, I'm running this, uh, this category, Medallion Stones and Trials. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. This was shown um, 12 years ago at the last GDQ. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty niche category. Uh, you, it's, yeah, we, it's called Medallion Stones and Trials, so we get every dungeon reward and also the uh, Trials in Ganon's Castle at the end. So that's the stones, which are uh, the reward for Deku Tree, uh, Dodongo's Cavern, and uh, Jabu Jabu. And then there are the... Uh, adult rewards, which are the medallions, so Forest Temple and then uh, Fire, Water, Shadow and Spirit. And also the Trials at the end, which you don't really get to see in Glitch Speedruns too much, um, because we usually just skip them or find a, a way, ways to kill the final boss differently. Um, but yeah, I'm Spittles and I, I run this a lot in my couches today. Uh, hey guys, my name is Thunder. Uh, I run the Defeat Ganon category of this game, which is a much shorter category. And um, I'm trying to get world record, but it's, it's really hard right now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, MSC. Yeah, so at first we are, we're seeing this intro. Uh, nowadays we actually skip the intro. Uh, it saves around three minutes. That was decided last year. Um, but for marathons, I like to watch it to just explain things and also to, uh, yeah, to just watch this nice intro cutscene. Um, so at first you're going to see us uh, get the sword shield on Ocarina, actually. Um, like you would in, I guess, Sword and Shield you would go, get in a casual playthrough. Um, but then we are actually going to leave the forest right away because uh, we're going we wa to want to check out the Deku Tree later. Okay, so, um, yeah. And uh, we, we go pretty much where you would go after beating the Deku Tree, I think, which is Kaku uh, Kakariko. And uh, how I like to divide, divide this uh, speedrun is into two phases. So the first one is the collection phase, where we get a lot of items that we actually need to, for a lot of glitches in the game. So you will see us, uh, us collect bombs and bomb shoes, and also, as I said, sword shield on, sword shield on Ocarina. Um, we're also going to collect a bottle. Uh, that's why we had to Kakariko. And um, yeah, we're also going to get a Pharaoh's Wind, which is actually the whole reason why kind of this road was created. Uh, this route is like a year old now, and um, it, it was kind of uh, forged around a huge uh, discovery we had for, for MST. Um, so yeah, at first we're just going to talk to Saria here, and we're just going to collect some rupees. Um, yeah. Here we go. All right. Yeah, so something you notice in the intro is that um, the text in uh, this version of the game is in Japanese. And uh, the way that works is just it's much faster to uh, skip through text because there is a lot of text in this game uh, and in this run. So um, it's much faster than the English version. And uh, those are the two kinds of uh, languages that, you can, uh, that you'll see on the Wii Virtual Console uh, version of the game. Yeah, there isn't a huge difference between the two languages. It's kind of like a switch. They, uh, they turn to Japanese or English when you kind of turn on the, the game, I would say. So really what is different is just the text. Everything else is, f uh, is the same. Uh, unlike Majora's Mask, actually, where there are version differences. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get the rupee in the corner here. Uh, so Spittle is collecting uh, 40 rupees here for Sword and Shield. 
And uh, he's going to do a couple nifty things uh, after this crawl space. Uh, the way he's going to navigate this, uh, this bush maze here is really unique. Uh, there's a lot of cool movement here. Uh, let's see if he can... Yeah, he's going to pause here to equip sword uh, in order to slash the, uh, slash the sign here to get um, the blue rupee there. And then he's going to do a trick called uh, Bridge Clip. Uh, and he's going to do a little setup here and uh, jump on the bridge. Nice. Right there. Nice. Really good. Yeah, so as I described earlier, we just get the shield here, and then we kind of want to just uh, escape the forest, and we're going to do that, that with a trick that, that is called a Water Extended Super Slide, actually. And uh, maybe Thunder, you can tell them a little bit about Water Extended Super Slides. Yeah, so basically, uh, Spittle is going to try to do a jump slash onto this uh, pillar here of grass, uh, which is a pretty hard surface, actually. And he, he got the Super Slide, so... Um, he's going to be uh, moving backwards very, very quickly uh, after hitting the water. And um, he's going to try to clip through this guy right here. Oh, nice. And he Let's got go. it. Really good. Perfect. Go. Really good. That's such a good start. That is really good. And now we are uh, getting the ocarina from Saria. Yeah, we're getting a, a little bit more of a cutscene here. And we're just going to get the ocarina. Um, usually, we would actually not get the ocarina in an MST speedrun when you look at the world record. Um, this route that I'm going to show today is a little bit different. It uh, loses around two and a half minutes to the world record route, I would say. Um, the, a trick we, we would usually actually do is in bottom of the well, okay? So in bottom of the well, you kind of do a, we do a trick that is called an ocarina dive, where you uh, dive down and then you have to navigate an unloaded uh, area and then you, we go to bomb juice because we need the bomb juice for a lot of tricks in this run, right? So in the first, uh, in the first room, what we can also do is called a corpse push. So we use that Skultula in the very beginning, and we just use the body of that Skultula to push us out of bounds, to go to the uh, bomb just very fast. And we also, uh, what we also don't need for that is Soul Shield and Ocarina. So we can just uh, do it with that. But it's a very hard trick, and it also makes a bunch of stuff in the child section much harder. So yeah, we won't see that today. It loses a little bit of time. And um, I guess the other thing we also do in this to have kind of a safer route is we um, we will get the fire tunic, okay? So when we go adult, it's part of that collection phase I was talking about earlier. Um, so when we got adult, we want to get the fire tunic, uh, which we will use for fire temple and also for later on the fire trial in the trial section of this run. And uh, yeah, it will have, help us a lot with timer stuff. And uh, usually we would do a trick where we manipulate the timer to not, to not have to deal uh, with like timing stuff and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, and this way, just gonna get the fire tunic and uh, and yeah, go pretty f uh, go pretty safe. You're gonna see a uh, another water extended super slide here. Hopefully I can hit it. Um, yeah, it's to skip that owl, right? Yeah, so uh, Spittle just talked to the owl there. Um, and the owl is gonna pop up again really soon. It flew over to uh, the entrance of Kakriko. So he's gonna do another water extended super slide because uh, uh, in order to skip the owl, Link needs to be in a busy state. So uh, his feet are going to be shuffling because uh, of that trick. And, uh, okay, that's really good. Oh, oh, he dropped it. Okay. That's okay. Usually you want to um, watch out for daytime here. So you don't want to have it turn nighttime. Um, otherwise, you have to wait for a while for the bridge to, oh, for the bridge to go back uh, down. But yeah, we're just gonna move here. That's totally fine. Yep. Um, yeah, now you're gonna see the Kako collection uh, quest, I guess. Uh, yeah, usually this, you just probably just do this to get a nice bottle, but we actually need, this, need to do this for a very essential item, which is the bottle, and also to kind of, um, yeah, kind of uh, combine this with getting the, with getting the bomb juice, because they are right there in the bottom of the well, right? So what we're going to do with Kakos is we're going to manipulate them in specific ways. So we can put them in the pen right, right uh, next to Anju. And what we're going to use for that is we're going to do a bunch of sword slashing and uh, throwing them in specific directions and also kind of walking behind them so they know where to go. Um, but yeah, for that owl I just tried to, try to skip. There actually have a lot of, um, lot of ways to skip it. Thunder was just talking about what is called a busy state, okay? So busy state is not only shuffling on the ground really fast with a <laughs> Wadex and a super slide, but it's also uh, when you just have um, have your ace say talk, 
So if you interact with the sign, uh, such as targeting it, or you target an NPC and it says dog, the owl is so nice and doesn't talk to you, which is pretty cool. And also when you uh, pull out items, the owl doesn't talk to you, which is kind of interesting. And I mentioned that, this because you're actually going to see me try and do that later. Uh, but yeah, first we want to get this, um, get these bottle, uh, get, get these cacos in the pen. I'm sorry. Uh, what? We, yeah. No, I was just going to say that uh, the bottle is really important, I feel like, because uh, there are a lot of different things that we can actually do with the bottle. Um, not just collect things like uh, bugs, fish, fairies, which are all going to be really important for this run, but uh, also doing a trick called Ocarina Items, which is going to help us do another trick oh. called uh, Wrong Warping or uh, Cutscene Skipping. Um, so uh, basically, the, the bottle getting hit the bottle here is, uh, is very important, and uh, Spill is going to finish up this uh, Kako collection uh, really, really nicely. That was, that was pretty good, I would say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good RNG. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you're going to see a trick here that's called a Navi Dive. There, there we go. go. Nice. nice. There we go. Yeah, so what that, what that does is you need, need to go on the edge of a surface and then just interact with Navi. And if you interact with her and you get pushed off a surface, it actually won't interact with water at all. So you can just uh, dive right through there and get into the bottom of the well. And uh, what are we doing in bottom of the well, Thunder? Yeah, so uh, Spill just got a, a little trick there, actually, called uh, Infinite Sword Glitch. And he's going to use that, uh, which basically, uh, if you do a crouch stab and pick up an item or activate Navi uh, on a certain frame, um, basically, it's going to make Link's sword swing infinitely. And so right now, it is still swinging infinitely in, his, uh, in sort of the, the sheath of his shield. Um, and he's going to use it to hover here on this green bubble. Uh, and then he's going to pull Ocarina. And that's going to make him dive down into an unloaded room in uh, Bomb of the Well. And he's going to do another water extended super slide here. Yeah, we have an unloaded. Uh we have that water extended super slide in an unloaded room. And this is unloaded because, you know, we're not really entering it uh, the proper way. <laughs> and um, that's nice. pretty useful because we can just go in here and get the bomb juice. There you go. Yeah, the bomb juice are going to be really important um, for a lot of tricks, uh, especially as child and um, a few as early adult as well. Um, for doing super slides and uh, a couple boosts as well. Yeah, so um, we just exited this with uh, War Master. He's so nice and just puts us at, right at the beginning of the of the mini dungeon, I guess. And uh, yeah, next up we're gonna do what you would also pro probably usually do in a casual playthrough, which is just go to the market and uh, see what they have. But this time we're not gonna enter it at uh, daytime, which you might do. We are going to try to uh, enter it at night time. And um, this might be a little, bit, a little bit scary because I didn't get the water extended super yeah. slide. So I hope I can get this. That would be great. Let's just, let's just see if I get this. It'll be important here for, Spittil, for Spittle to potentially not retarget um, so that go. he doesn't target a, uh, one of the enemies that pops up uh, when it becomes nighttime. So uh, he can get a good angle on the uh, side of the bridge, or the side of the, uh, yeah, the bridge that comes down. So he's going to take a little bit of damage here. That's important for the cutscene skip that's coming up uh, later for uh, Zelda's Lullaby. Oh. No. Ah, oh. That's tough. Yeah, I had a bad angle there, so I wanted to kind of adjust it, but that didn't work. That's totally fine. Uh, yeah, I just need to wait uh, for like a minute here, just for the... Uh, just for night to end, so we can get into the market. I guess now we're actually entering the market at, at daytime, which you would usually do. <laughs> okay, if we've got a minute, I've got a very special donation. Yeah, sure. This is $100 from CMM1215. <laughs> Little did I know when I stumbled into your stream over a year ago that I'd find one of my best friends on this earth. Getting to know you since then has been an absolute pleasure that I wouldn't trade for anything. Before we even met, you grinded and practiced and grinded even more to achieve excellence in Ocarina of Time. Your strong ethic, dedication, and strength has been nothing short of an inspiration to me. Now you've made it to the GDQ stage today, and everyone watching is going to see what you're made of and the fruits of your labor, and I am endlessly proud of and excited for you. What they won't see or know about the way I do, unfortunately, is your enormous capacity for kindness and love, 
the many conversations and laughs we've shared at the most ridiculous times of day, the ways we've supported each other and built each other up, the growth, accomplishments, and strides you've made in your life, and the bond we've formed that I cannot imagine my life without. You, Remez, are my hero, my man of steel, my little brother, <laughs> and simultaneously, you're who I want to be when I grow up. Wow. Being here in person to see you rock this run means everything to me. I love you so much. I've done my best to express this in words today, but the rest of it will be in the hug that I give you when this is all over. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Here's to ever greater heights going forward. Today is only the beginning for you. Thank you so much, CMM. Yeah, thank you. That was nice. That was awesome. Okay, now we actually have daytime. Uh, it was actually perfect, that donation, with the donation that uh, it took up, I guess. And now we're going to try and get that uh, owl skip I, try, I, talk, I was talking about with that, uh, with pulling out an item. So we're going to try to do that. It just saves a couple seconds. Yeah, this is a, this is a tough one right here. Um, I think if Spittle gets this, it'll make up for the, the failed owl skip earlier. Um, yeah. Definitely. I mean, this is a, this is a tough one. There you go. Nice. 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 Yeah, so we want to kind of save as much daytime as we can here because, it, as you can tell, it's uh, already daytime and you can't enter the, uh, enter the courtyard at night because they're just going to throw you out. So we're really going to get there at daytime. But uh, what I did there is called a seam walk, okay? So when two walls kind of meet, they create this little seam you can walk on. And if you walk on there with a good angle, you can just uh, go up and uh, walk over these walls, which is really good. Okay, and now... There you go. Nice. nice. Okay, we. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our first bomb shoot trick there uh, in order to uh, not have to push the box there in order to uh, enter the courtyard. And uh, Spittle's going to go for a, kind of a risky guards uh, uh, method here where he's just going to try to do frame perfect side hops. And the way that works is the guards are going to be scanning using these sort of invisible bubbles that shoot out of their eyes. And uh, if he can do frame perfect side hops or be a little bit more careful, this is really good. So far, um, he can completely avoid them and get through the courtyard super quickly. Um. Yeah, we're just going to wait here because this, this guy can be very mean to us. Um, usually I would try to skip him with frame perfect side ups, so he just can't, can't really catch us in time. But uh, yeah, I don't want to do it here, just, just for marathon safety. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and that's our. Uh, that's, a, that's right before our first cutscene skip. So after this cutscene is going to come up the lullaby cutscene skip, which is, as I said, our first one. So okay, so how cutscene skips works in this work in this game is you want to enter just right at the cutscene trigger, and also die at the same time, because if you die at the same time, the cutscene will get triggered, and you will get what you get usually would think you would get in the cutscene. Okay. Because the game just gives you the item in the cutscene right away when a cutscene starts. So what we're going to do there is we, I think we have one heart right now, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I need to damage down here and then damage down again to actually get a, yeah, to actually just die at the uh, cutscene enter and that's going to be fine. But um, yeah, after this I'm just going to try to go adult and you're going to see how I try to do that. But I think we have some time for donations here. Excellent. I'm happy to read some donations. There is so much support coming out for you for Ocarina of Time and for the Super Mario 64 drum percent run because I don't see the donation just yet, but I did see the tracker make an enormous jump. We just met Super Mario 64 drum percent. $100,000 raised. Thank you so much to everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean all of you out there. $200 from Cruxer. So stoked to see you running this incredible category at GDQ Spittle. It's been so long since MST was showcased. I know you'll smash it and do this awesome game proud. $5 from Snooty Face. Greetings from the audience. I've been dreaming of watching a GDQ OOT speedrun in person for years. It's amazing to, for it to finally be real. And in my city. Good luck to spittle -san. Here's five bucks for drum percent. $150 from a new clone. Hello, AGQ, AGDQ team. I'm officially cancer-free 15 months now, and to celebrate it, here's 150 bucks. Great job from everyone, runners, behind-the-scenes crew, announcers, moderators, and crowd once again. And now, let's unlock the Super Mario 64 drum run. 
$25 from No Warp Zones. I'm not 100% sure what drum percent is, but here's $25 towards finding out. So good news for you on that. $5 from The Backside of Water, who says, gotta love Zelda games. We'll donate again if the host gives their best. Well, excuse me, princess. $10 from The Katashi. Sorry, you had something, spit on. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, I think we have time for like two or three more. Um, yeah. You got it. $10 from The Katashi. Great to see OOT back to GDQ again with, in my opinion, one of the most fun categories. Really enjoying the grind from Spittle at the moment, and I am sure this run will be equally good. Good luck for the run. And $50 from Epona3008, who says, of course I have to donate when my best girl, Epona, is in the game being played. Good luck with the run and much love. Less than three. All right. Oh, I'm going to try this again. Yeah. I messed up my uh, uh, position right there. There we go. Okay. Nice. That's a cutscene skip. I think it's funny how to damage down. You kind of just like did the bomb chew on Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just throw bomb chews at characters and you get a little damage, but they actually, they it doesn't hurt them at all. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah, she's, she's fine. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna head to uh, to Temple of Time to try and get adult. Um, but I guess in the meantime, I can talk about this category a little bit because I kind of just brush over uh, what this category also entails besides uh, getting the medallion stones and trials. And uh, you might you might have seen all dungeons for this game, maybe with uh, with star reference manipulation or without. I know um, a couple of GDQs ago there was a run with star reference manipulation, where which is a memory glitch that's pretty crazy. You um, uh, you can warp uh, to a lot of places, and you can also get a lot of items um, very fast. But we are not going to see that today. Uh, we're also not going to see bottle on B today, or uh, any item manipulation glitch for that. Yeah, for that regard, uh, item manipulation glitches are kind of just glitches that make you create items uh, in your inventory. Okay. So in this category, this kind of was always a staple to not have those. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to try and get past this door right here. Yeah, so this is a big trick right here. Uh, door of Time Skip, very famous trick in this game. So there's actually uh, there's actually a little gap in the door here. And uh, Spittle can do a backward side hop here to clip through the gap here. And he got it. Really nice. Nice, OK. And now it's time to uh, turn adult. Yeah, and once we turn adult, we uh, we kind of just want to get the hook shot, which I think you would also get if you're just in a casual playthrough. So uh, yeah, we're going to get that. And then we're actually going to do a trick that is called a uh, hookshot jump in, uh, in Graveyard. I'm just going to try to explain it right now, because it's, it's a kind of a crazy trick. And uh, you're also going to see what it is. So if it's maybe kind of a too complex uh, yeah, description of the trick, you're just going to see what I'm going to do. So what we're going to do in Graveyard is we want to get Link in kind of a glitch state where he kind of just turns around. And what that helps us with is that if you hookshot something, for some reason, right at the uh, start when you tr get like pulled to a, I guess, destination from hookshotting something, you uh, get a lot of vertical momentum. Okay, And if, you, if we just interrupt that, we can get shot in the air, and we can do a bunch of crazy stuff. You're going to see it a bunch in this run. But in Graveyard, we can actually just walk on the walls and then get into a Shadow Temple early. Um, so yeah, and uh, I think this is around like probably the half of the collection phase of of the yeah of this run. So after that is a, a dungeon rush phase where you're just gonna do it through a bunch of dungeons pretty fast. And uh, as you could tell, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but um, you could you didn't see any dungeons so far beside I guess bottom of the well. Um, so in the collection phase, we really just want to get as many items as, as possible uh, that we need pretty fast. Uh, we're also going to clear out Shadow Temple in that phase uh, because just on the on our way, you know. And then uh, after that, we're going to, as I said, go go through a bunch of dungeons. We're going to uh, start with Fire Temple and then just use also a couple of wrong warps and stuff like that to uh, go around. But yeah, so um, I think something that's crazy about this is uh, while we were practicing, Spittle mentioned that um, if you look closely at Raru, I'm not sure if it's going to show another <laughs> close-up. Uh, uh, image of Raru, but uh, there's actually a Triforce sort of imprinted on his head, on his forehead. Yes, I didn't, I didn't notice this for like a year, but when running this game, 
And then I just saw, and I just looked at him. Was I, it scared me to be honest. <laughs> you can't, you cannot see it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we have also have time for for a couple of donations here. This is just a very pretty long cutscene. It is pretty. It is also a little long, but that gives us time to thank people like our ten thousand dollar anonymous donor. I lost my aunt last year to breast cancer. She was gracious and kind and always helpful to others. So I can think of no better way to honor her memory than by donating. Thank you so incredibly much, Anonymous. We've also got $20 from Zach. Wishing my dear friend Spittle all the best for his run. I am so proud of you. Give it maximum power. Lots of love, Zach. $25 from Zoramaster98. OOT was the game that got me into gaming. When I was three, my cousins would give me an unplugged N64 controller and tell me I was the fairy. And now I can beat it much faster than them and I know a ton of tricks. I always love seeing this game on the GDQ stage. So much nostalgia. Good luck, Spittlesan. You've got this. $50 to PCF from Biz Burnley. Hey, Spittle, it's Biz. A very sleepy hello from Europe. Told you I will donate when it's your turn. Sorry I couldn't be on the couch, wink, wink. In all seriousness, I am so proud that you are on AGDQ 2024 this year. Good luck with the run. Oh, and I hope heater Chan isn't lonely at home, smiley face. Have fun, everyone, and thanks, GDQ, for the amazing event. Thank you very much, Biz Burnley. Time for a little more? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. She just introduced herself right now. We got a little more time, like hmm. a minute or two. Ah, mysterious new figure. <laughs> Who is this? $21 from Bender Slash. Hey, Spittle, this is your brother. I wish you all of luck in the world. I am here, and you got this. That is my, actually my brother, yeah. <laughs> ben Emberly sending in $25 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Greetings from the UK. I was a composer and arranger for the Symphony of the Goddesses concert, and I've been watching you guys for years and totally love what you do. The Zelda speedruns are my favorite. Yes, I'm totally biased and are some of my gaming highlights. Never stop being awesome. All right, so we just got through the Master Sword cutscene. It's, I think it's the second longest cutscene in the game, followed by uh, the Light Arrow cutscene, which we're going to see much later in this game. But um, yeah, we're just going to uh, start the adult section right here. So what we want to do at first is a hyper extended super slide. So we talked to, we talked to you about what are extended super slides earlier, but uh, this is uh, much better, and that's why it's called a hyper extended super slide, I guess. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a, a bomb chew, and we're going to do the same trick as we did before, where we have to hold ESS the whole time. But this time we're going to do it with uh, exploding off of a bomb, which gives us uh, a little bit more speed, actually. Oh. Ah, uh, that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I, I was just going to explain ESS. So um, basically, in order to do the Hesses and, and the Wesses, the Water Extended Super Slides and Hyper Extended Super Slides, um, you need to hold a very specific uh, position on the control stick, um, which is uh, a little, just a little bit in uh, down right or down left. Uh, you can hold it in right or left, but then you can't switch between them. Um, but it, uh, it's a rotating function for Link, and uh, it helps us, uh, helps us go fast here. Yeah, and she got it for Kakariko. That was pretty good. Nice, really good. <laughs> yeah, and one thing you might have noticed is uh, I have a bomb on my in my inventory right now, but I shouldn't have able to. Oh, that that goes. Yeah, I shouldn't have. To, I shouldn't be able to have that right now. But uh, the game kind of defaults on giving you a couple items in your inventory once you go adult. Um, and how, what we use that for is we can we can't actually use those bombs. Those are just fake bombs, kind of. Uh, but what we can use them for is we can actually do bottles over the bomb slot, and uh, until we get bombs, we will have a yeah, we will have our friends the box in there. And now it's stamp array. Stamp arrays can be kind of tough. Uh, we have to do a lot of movement here to uh, kind of just get past this. But the flames he he throws are all random, so he can just throw them in my face, and I can't do anything about it. Um, getting it by w once by this isn't that bad because usually you just you just lose a little bit of health, which we can also use for the uh, Shadow Temple cuts and skip that's coming up. Um, but he was actually nice right here, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the best time you can get for this is a 46. I think this is a 47, which is still pretty good. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, nice. that was so close. That's yeah. really good. So now we're just going to void out again to get to graveyard again, because otherwise you would just be in the windmill, which is kind of slow. Um, so you, now you're going to see the trick that I was explaining earlier, which is a hookshot jump or early bow. And uh, yeah, that's, this item is also what we're going to use for it. Um, this, this is actually pretty useful. Uh, it's much more useful than the bow. We're also going to get the bow for, uh, so we can shoot light arrows, but it's, yeah. M most things you can do in the game are kind of just replaced by By the hookshot? Yeah, that's that was brutal. good. Yeah, getting crushed <laughs> must not be fun there. Yeah. All right, so let me try and get this. So yeah, Spill's going to focus up here. Um, also, when he gets onto the wall here, he's going to get uh, infinite sword glitch again. And that's going to help him uh, not fall off the ledge of the, uh, the wall. Because infinite sword glitch has a property where uh, you basically can't walk off ledges. So it can be very, very useful. Nice. Nice. There you go. Oh. Okay, so we just have to maneuver here very carefully. Yeah, it's, it's a little easy to get stuck on these uh, walls, but hopefully that doesn't happen to Spittle. Uh, you'll also notice that if you see down there, um, the Shadow Temple entrance, the, the door that's usually there, is not actually loaded. Uh, so we can just kind of walk in. Yeah, so uh, those loading zones and the rooms there are always loaded, but if you don't properly load the whole room, you can actually just walk in there, which is very useful. And the trick that's coming up you're gonna see, uh, that you're going to see is called boat skip, okay? So usually in this dungeon, maybe you know, you would take the boat to get through the whole thing. Uh, but we, what we're going to do here is we're going to use, uh, or we're going to make use of how the dungeons work in this game. So how dungeons work in this game is every room you see is actually um, partially loaded the whole time. And the only thing that isn't loaded in those rooms are things you can interact with. Also a nice little dead hand kill here. Um, but yeah, so the rooms are partially loaded and you can just enter them. But to get into the loading zones, which are only at the beginning and end of a dungeon because they have to load very big uh, rooms, um, you can enter them just as with the enter, uh, early shadow gl glitch, I guess. You can just enter them as well. So what we're going to do here, maybe you can explain. Yeah, so Spill's going to use those hover boots right away in combination with a triple slash clip to get through this wall. Um, and this is going to allow him to uh, push through the wall and go down into uh, the unloaded room uh, where he's going to do the boat skip. And uh, yeah, he's going to try to get into the loading zone. This is a really, really intricate trick here, so he's going to need to focus. Nice. Nice. Let's go. Yeah, that's a very scary trick. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the uh, hardest boss key skip we're going to do in this run. So it's also the first one we do. So that's nice to get out of the way. Um, now you, we can see Bongo. So Bongo is actually my uh, favorite boss as a child. Um, but now it's, uh, it's a pretty easy boss to to fight, you just kind of get an uh, infinite sword glitch again, and then we just run into this eye and, uh, yeah, gonna try and um, and defeat him. Good. Yeah, so Spittle is gonna also drop bugs here um, in order to get the bottle in his hand, and uh, infinite sword glitch will still be active while we have the bottle in hand, so he'll be able to actually kill Bongo with the bottle. Um, and then uh, he's gonna use that bottle in order to do the, uh, the cutscene skip. There you go, nice. There's the kill. Yeah. Do we have time on the way to our next uh, objective for a very special donation? Um, I'm going to explain one thing, and then you can go ahead, for sure. Absolutely. So the next thing coming up is uh, our first blow up cutscene skip. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use a trick that uh, Thunder explained earlier called Ocarina Items so we can get at the edge of the warp 
And then we're gonna time warping away with also dying. So we just get it right here, and then we want to time the death. Let's see if I can get it. There you go. Nice. This should work, I think. Nice, okay. All right, good. Okay, now you can go ahead with the donation. <laughs> hey, happy to. With apologies in advance to Fangamer for their $10,000 donation. Wow. <laughs> and you'll know what I'm about to apologize for because here's how this donation starts. Hey, look, listen. Fangamer here, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this donation. It's made possible by all the rupees that have been spent on the Fangamer AGDQ 2024 merch collection. 100% of the profits from sales of GDQ merch gets turned into donations that support the Prevent Cancer Foundation. You have until the end of the event to pick up some awesome merch while supporting a great cause. See our full lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. All right, so we are heading now to get bombs, our next item on our list. So we're going to do a little uh, hyper-extended super slide here again to get past Kakariko, because it's kind of slow to just walk here uh, in the normal way. So we want to get past this uh, staircase and then just use a couple of precise angles. There you go. And you, yeah. Yeah, you just made that look really easy. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do another one to get to Dodong's Cavern here. And then um, you're going to see our next glitch is coming up for Dodong's Cavern. So remember how I was talking about uh, that? Oh. Nice, you got it. OK. So remember I was talking about how uh, Dungeons are actually just faster as adults. This one is a is a pretty special one because um, right here we have to do a a hookshot jump again. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna uh, damage down and then we can time dying with hookshotting that ladder right there. Yeah, so Spill's going to set up and try to pause on a specific frame uh, in order to actually activate the hookshot. Uh, this looks pretty good. There you go, nice. And he's going to shoot up and go onto the bridge. Yeah, so we are right up here where we, you would usually um, just explode those... Uh, I, I think it's a dinosaur. <laughs> the dinosaur eyes, and you can just walk up here and get the bombs. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the bomb pack. So uh, after this, we're gonna head to um, we to, we're gonna head to Goran City for the uh, fire tunic I was talking about earlier. We're gonna talk to the little guy that, that's waiting for us there, and um, yeah, we can just use a couple assets to get there. And I think on the, our way there, we can have, maybe have some time for like one or two donations. There you go. Yes, yeah, certainly. We've got ten dollars from Shakamaru, who says. Proud of you, Spittle, and love to watch how far you have come running OOT from Hondo to GSR to MST. Wish I was there to support. P.S. Thunder needs to catch up to us on One Piece. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've also got $50 from Lady of the Kid Fox, who says, First Legends of Zelda, then Rocking with Mario, followed by Tass, and then Slaying Demons in Doom. I guess sleep is a dream tonight. And oh, Lady of the Kid Fox, if I could tell you, don't stop there, because we have a very special block coming up after that. So much good stuff tonight. $50 from Sharper777. One of my longtime friends was diagnosed with cancer earlier this year. So while I have always loved this event, its mission has suddenly become much closer to home. It is so amazing the speedrunning community has come together for such a great cause. Together, we can make cancer a thing of the past. Save the frames, kill the cancer. And that is both a very sweet message and a reference to the Taskbot incentive for Save or Kill the Animals bid war coming up a little later on. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. That's going to be that's going to be awesome to watch, to be honest. But yeah, coming up, uh, we're just talking to this uh, guy right here. He's t telling us how uh, all Gorons are gone and they're in the Fire Temple. And because we're a really nice hero, we're actually going to go there first to save them. Um, <laughs> So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to get go to the uh, Bolero, uh, where you would usually get the Bolero song. And um, we're going to do, do our next cutscene skip here to uh, skip that cutscene for the Bolero song. So it's also going to be our, uh, our only void out cutscene skip. 
So yeah, we just want to head there and uh, do this little clip here to get into the Death Mountain Crater. Yeah, and uh, Spittle's going to utilize ISG again, uh, Infinite Sword Glitch, uh, on the bridge for Bolero, uh, for the Bolero cutscene skip in order Thank to uh, get into a specific position and uh, complete the, uh, the song skip, the cutscene skip. Yeah, you would usually just uh, pull that statue and uh, go in there like that, but I, I wanted to do a little clip here, there. <laughs> Took a couple tries, but we got there, and let's see if I can get this. Yes, that works. Nice. So yeah, we're uh, we're not going to talk to Sheik there. Um, we're just going to kind of void out into the lava. But we're we're okay. We're going to continue on with the run. Yeah, you can actually just hear the music still. So Sheik really wants to to talk to us right now, but we have to save the grounds actually. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, Okay. Yeah, important to important to equip uh, to equip uh, Goron tunic there because uh, the the timer is based on how many hearts we have and we do not have a lot of health. So um, if uh, if he didn't equip Goron tunic there, we would have uh, would have died. So it's uh, a good a good save. Yeah, and I guess another thing that is uh, good to explain is what you saw in um, in the Dongo's cavern and what you will see throughout the run is called a pause buffer. So what we, uh, I guess you can, you have already seen it in a bunch of other speedruns, but uh, a pause buffer can help us to input very precise uh, inputs in the run for specific tricks, uh, and we can ensure that with the uh, unpause lag we have after pausing. So if you press something in the unpause lag, let's say A, because you really want to uh, press A on the next, on the very next frame after pausing, we can just press it in the unpause lag and it will, uh, it will do that. So that's very useful. But here we just have the, another cutscene to get magic. Um, this is almost, almost it with the collection phase of the run. After this, we're going to get the uh, Ferrous Wind, which might be an odd item to get, but as I explained earlier, it's pretty important for this route. Um, you're going to see it later. Uh, yeah, after this, we're just going to do a Hess to get there. So I guess we can also squeeze in a couple donations here. Yeah, so magic is going to be pretty important uh, for a couple things, especially using the light arrows. Uh, so we need magic for that. And, um, and also, uh, magic allows you to do quick spins, which might be helpful going forward, uh, especially when we fight the Stalfos, which are uh, very, very difficult bosses. So it can be helpful, but uh, for the Stalfos and Forest Temple, we'll probably just be using crouch tabs and jump slashes. Yeah, I'm just going to try to do a very difficult test here. Let's see if I can get it. Yes, nice. Oh, okay, I dropped that. And yeah, it's very hard to uh, to hold the ESS position uh, on your controller while you're doing the hassles. So it takes a lot of time to master, and uh, yeah, sometimes you're just nervous and you still fail them. So, but yeah, next we're gonna um, use this little shortcut here to get to Lost Woods, which is actually really useful in uh, in a lot of speedruns. So I'm glad they included it. <laughs> um, but yeah, after this, you're going to see a bunch of tricks just bundled together. Uh, this is kind of a triple combo of just uh, pretty cool tricks, I would say. So first, we're going to get on, uh, up, the, up on this, clip in there, first and try. Then, yeah, and That's then really get good. in there. For some reason, that uh, shortcut cutscene uh, or loading zone there just exceeds all the way to the top of that rock, so we can just swim into it. It's kind of funny. And here we can just uh, use hover boots to get behind the behind the waterfall and get into the Zora's domain, which we have to go to to uh, get to Ferris Wind. But uh, since the red ice is still surrounded by the, on the, uh, surrounds the Zora King, how are we going to get past that? This is another really difficult hess that he's going to do right here. Oh, oh that's tough. Yeah, I, I hold the wrong me as this position there, so I just slid out to the right, unfortunately. But that's all good. We can just. Walk up here the normal way, and then do a little clip. This clip I'm about to do is actually, I would say it's the easiest clip in the whole game. So if you're at home and you just kind of want to try to mess around with the game a little bit, try this. You just have to side up there and uh, jump slash into here. And you can skip <laughs> skip the red eyes Zora King.
Yeah, normally you would need blue fire there to unfreeze King Zora, and he would give you the letter and scooch out of the way, which is a long cutscene, but uh, we can skip that with the, uh, the easy clip there. And uh, he's just doing another hyperextended super slide, which you're going to see a lot in this run. Um, and uh, it really helps us get around quickly. But uh, it's okay. It's okay if he drops it. Uh, he can just go there, just walk there. And uh, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, so here we are for our last item in our collection phase. So we're just going to get the uh, Pharaoh's Wind here. And right after going to um, Fire Temple, where we're going to start our journey. And the Fire Temple, you're gonna see, at the very beginning, you're going to see a glitch that's called Time Stop. And what Time Stop does, and uh, how we get it, is you, um, you drop a fish, and then you catch the fish again, and then you kind of interact with the fish in a, in a weird way where the cam camera just... Um, it, you just the camera just points to Link, and you have kind of a yeah like an inverted uh, control scheme and also an inverted vision vision. And we, what we use that for is to enter the Darunia room and uh, with the camera pointing to Link, so we don't talk to Darunia. So as long as you don't talk to Darunia, you will not uh, you will not interact with him, and he will also not sacrifice himself for the for the Goron. So that's very nice, and be a nice hero and uh, yeah and save him. So we're just going to play Bolero here. There you go. Yeah, there's going to be a lot going on in Fire Temple. Uh, a lot of really cool tricks. And uh, Spittle is also going to showcase his, uh, his movement and the way he navigates dungeons. He has uh, a few world records in the uh, individual levels categories. And uh, he, he is very, very... Uh, the way he navigates dungeons is, is extremely high level. And so it's really cool to pay attention to that. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do time stop. Let me see if I can get it. Just going to get it right here at the beginning. There nice. you go. So now Spittle's camera is inverted, and basically it's not going to turn around when he enters this door right here. And uh, we do not want to look at Darunia, because if we look at Darunia, uh, it's going to load the cutscene. So Spittle's going to have to be really careful to keep a uh, camera angle here. Uh, that's a really nice jump slash under that pillar. Um, and oh, oh okay. that's tough. Yeah, I just had a qu shot up there. It's kind of unfortunate, but it's OK. can just walk there again. Yeah. Should be okay with the camera as long as Spittle is careful here. Um, again, we do not want Jerunia to sacrifice himself to Vavagia and try to save the Gorons. We can, we can definitely do that as the hero. Going to roll right past that Goron. It's okay. He'll, he'll get out of the dungeon okay, I, I promise. Um, but yeah, it, we are not going to talk to the Gorons. We are just going to uh, collect the keys and uh, step on the uh, switches. Yeah, we don't really need to talk to Gorons at all, right? So a lot of this dungeon is pretty, um, it's pretty much what you would see, uh, except for the movement and some of the tricks coming up. But uh, like this room and the room before, um, basically uh, the key collection is pretty, pretty simple. Um, it's kind of somewhat similar to maybe what you'd see in a casual playthrough. Um, it will get complicated, and uh, it really, it kind of ramps up as the, t the temple goes on in terms of the tricks that Spittle is going to do. So it starts off pretty easy right here, uh, but then it's going to get uh, very, very intense. Yeah, so up next we're going to do another very difficult test. So I'm going to do a little setup here and then we can try and get it. It's across this whole lava field here. Ah, oh, damn. That's okay. So we, now we can just back walk, but that's totally fine. It just saves a couple seconds. Yeah, a lot of these bumble walls here um, there's, uh, that are featured in Fire Temple, and uh, there are some uh, like areas of collision where uh, they're only one-sided. So uh, you'll see coming up in a room where uh, we're going to clip through uh, the, the corner of the wall with the bomb and uh, step on a switch to get another key, and then we're going to climb up through a, uh, an area of collision, which is like a bomb, uh, a bomb surface, and we're just going to climb up right through it. So you guys will see that in a little bit. Yeah, and beside that, this uh, dungeon is pretty vanilla, I would say, beside the, that and the uh, Darunia cutscene skip. But the Darunia cutscene skip is really just to, well, avoid that Darunia cutscene and help him out a little bit. Um, nice. So, 
Yeah, we're just going to push this blog. We just hook shot on that. Um, and we're going to get into the next room where we are actually going to do that clip Thunder was just talking about. Um, I know you also notice us not really talking to the Gorons at all. And as I mentioned before, we don't really need to do that. Um, they're going to find their way home. Um, <laughs> Well, an interesting fact about this is, even if you don't free them all, they're some, somehow all just going to find their way home again. I think they have some rescue uh, mission out, uh, off screen for those speedrunners, which is kind of fun. But yeah, let's do this uh, clip here. Yeah, so normally you would push the block here and, uh, and trigger the switch in order to go up, but yeah, Spittle's just going to go right through the wall there and get another key. Oh, <laughs> okay, oh! I guess we, we are going to talk to a yeah. Goron. Okay, we're going to say we're just going to have a nice talk to this guy. There he goes. That was worth it. <laughs> that was worth it. Well, whether we kill or save the animals later, we save the Goron now. So thank you very <laughs> much for that. Okay, so I have to watch out with my health a little bit. I don't want to get damaged here. There's a slug right uh, right on top of this, um, and we don't really want to get damaged by that guy. But I think I'm going to be fine. Um, you, you can also see just the wall that we're going to go through here. You're not really supposed to. Uh, you're not really supposed to be here that yet. Oh, nice! We've got really yeah, nice good. RNG there. Okay. Um, yeah, you're not really supposed to be there yet. So we just clipped that wall, which saves. I think it saves a couple rooms. Um, one second. I'm just going to do the save threat here. Oh, let's not die there. Good save. Yep. Let's get an extra heart here, just nice. for safety. All right. Now we can go to the next room. And next, in this next room, we're actually gonna uh, show off a uh, hess that's pretty important, and uh, it saves us a lot of confusion because I, I'm honest, I, I'm still getting uh, confused by these firewalls in this maze here. Yeah, this is a crazy room, honestly, especially for a casual player. Spill's gonna just hess past these firewalls that come up, and uh, <laughs> that was perfect. That was so good. <laughs> and then just backflip through the huge firewall. And get some uh, nice bomb drops here from the uh, from the pots. And now we are going on to the Flare Dancer mini boss. Yeah, this Flare Dancer, you can just hook shot them and then uh, crouch step. These crouch steps. Uh, so how crouch steps work in this game is you um, it, they always save the last damage you t uh, you de dealt. So since we did a jump slash getting into this, we can just. Uh, you can just crush that and deal the most damage because a jump slash is the attack that deals the most damage. So we can just do that and uh, yeah, kill him in three hits. Nice. All right, so now we're gonna get up to uh, Hammer. And after we get Hammer, we're gonna do a, a Busky skip with a trick called a Recoil Boost. So now that we have a Hammer, we can actually do that trick. And it helps us getting out of bounds uh, in dungeons, so we can just kind of maneuver our way into the loading, uh, loading zones we need, we need to for, for the boss fight, right? So we're just going to use that. Uh, those are usually pretty easy, um, which is nice, because otherwise we would have to do... Uh, we have to either go down or do a bunch of crazy stuff. So we're just going to maneuver through this room. Yeah, this can be a little tricky here with this staircase. Um, it is a very narrow, and Spill is going to have to move very quickly. So, uh, yeah, it can be tough with nerves and with the keys flying around that are on fire. Uh, there's a lot going on in this room. It's kind of deceiving, but he did a really nice job of getting the hammer right here. So, yeah, he's going to do like an, sort of an instant setup right here by uh, like uh, clipping down into this uh, wall, and that's the frame right there. He's going to equip hover boots and slide through the corner, and he's going to jump slash and uh, go straight into the Volvagia boss room. Nice, yeah, that was good. Yep, and he got it. All right, so this fight is pretty, it's pretty difficult. Uh, Thunder can explain to you how this fight works, but I, I have to focus up for this. Yeah, as Spittle was saying, this is a really difficult boss fight, especially in speedruns uh, and in the casual game as well. But um, basically, he's going to do a combination of damaging the boss uh, with crouch steps to, uh, to the head of Volvagia and also uh, stunning Volvagia with bombs. And so the way that works is basically there are hitboxes underneath the stage. And so uh, the bombs will explode and reach down into that hitbox. And uh, so that's basically how this fight is going to go. So uh, Spill is going to focus up here and, 
yeah, let's uh, let's hold our breath and hope Spittle does a good job. Nice. nice. There it is. Really good to get past that. That was really scary. <laughs> yeah. We got a, we got something that's called a troll hole there. So um, you, if you see the nine holes there, um, there's only one we can, where we can, you can actually reach the hitboxes, right? So if, you, if a budget comes out there, it's really hard sometimes to place our bombs right. I'm going to try to do a little setup here. Yeah, here there is another. Uh, here's a wrong warp coming up, and this is a cool one because it's going to take us to a uh, sort of a mysterious location, and you guys are going to see uh, where it's going to take us, and it's going to be really, really helpful for the speedrun. Okay, we got a little bit of a troll here. Nice. nice. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, so Spill's going to focus right here, and uh, we are going to warp away to. Uh, well, you're going to find out. Nice, okay. All right, and we're warping to Forest Temple. <laughs> Oh, so Spittle's going to do a little trick here uh, with the Ocarina. Uh, basically, if you uh, get damaged and you pull Ocarina and you keep pulling Ocarina um, very, very quickly, uh, Link will keep taking damage. So important here to take damage so that we can uh, do a minuet cutscene skip for the song, uh, similar to what we did with Zelda's Lullaby and Bolero. And uh, yeah, that's really nice right there. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I got the uh, setup fully right because I had a weird push, but I still got it, so this was, this was really good. Um, yeah, now we can actually enter the forest temple. Um, so I, that is actually my favorite uh, song cutscene skip because you kind of just, it's really cool, you just kind of re-enter the area and then, uh, oh, that's fine. Uh, you just kind of enter the area and die, die right away and still get the cutscene, uh, or the song, I, sh I should say. And we actually don't really need the song on the run. Uh, <laughs> We just need that area to be cleared up so we can just walk right past. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, it's a pretty nice song still, but we don't really need it. And what is coming up is, a, yeah, it's a trick that Thunder can maybe explain to you more. Yeah, it's going to be a really good idea for Spittle to uh, save the game in this dungeon uh, because of this trick coming up. And it's a really big trick, and uh, it is called Jungle Jump. It is another hookshot jump uh, coming up. And also, style posts are going to be introduced in this dungeon, which are a really difficult boss. So a lot of stuff going on in the Forest Temple. Um, but basically, uh, Spittle, what you're going to see is Spittle is going to sort of wedge himself into the door frame. And... Uh, and he's going to pull Hookshot and use the chest. So basically, after you kill these Stalfos, uh, a chest pops up, which has a key in it. Of course. It's, fi it's fine. We I just got a fairy, so I can't just get revived. We just need to get damage down a little bit, and then we can re-enter the, uh, the room and can... And can yeah. get the fairy gun, yeah. The Stalfos are uh, arguably oh. some of the most difficult enemies in the game, honestly. There you go. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah, so uh, again, the chest is going to pop up, and Spittle is going to do a trick with bombs in order to, uh, and uh, with a crouch stab and equipping hover boots, uh, in order to get into the door frame. And um, he's just going to need to get another fairy here because he used one earlier. And uh, yeah, then he's going to do the hookshot jump on the chest. So it's going to look pretty similar to the one he did in Dodongo's Cavern. And uh, basically, it's going to uh, shoot him up all the way to the next level. And uh, that's going to be really beneficial. Um, and uh, he'll then set Pharaoh's wind and reload the room, and we'll continue on. OK. Nice. 
There you go. There nice. it is. Let's go. Yes, that, so there we, there we go. Uh, we need to reload this room because they, they shouldn't be uh, able to be here since we, we're still technically uh, entering this room for the first time. So I just want to reload it here with Ferris went and then we can just fight this guy. This is a tough fight because there's a hole in the middle of the room, uh, which makes the Southwest fight even more difficult. And then it's going to drop down, and we're going to have two more to fight. Uh, so the Forest Temple can be pretty relentless in, ter in terms of enemies. Ooh, yeah, and uh, Spill needs to be careful here. So killing the Southwest can cause there lag. Oh, nice. But yeah, that's really good. That's a really good fight. That was, that was really fast, to be honest. And here we have the bow. Yeah. Here we have the bow. <laughs> um, now we're just going to do the same thing we, we did in Fire Temple. So we're just going to do a setup again and then do a recoil boost to go up from all the way uh, uh, um, up top to the bottom to the boss room, right? Yeah, normally in Forest Temple you would have to, uh, you'd have to confront the four pose that are, in the, uh, that are in the dungeon, which takes a really long time. So Spittle is going to skip all that with uh, a uh, clip through the wall and with yeah, hover boots. And he's going to go all the way down right into the uh, loading zone for the boss. All right, so this is Phantom Ganon. So for Phantom Ganon, this is, I mean, this, uh, this boss is pretty notorious, I think. You just kind of look around and you have to find the right one. Uh, how we find out who's the right one is just by looking at who has the most, uh, kind of the brightest armor. And uh, once that phase is uh, done, we can just uh, beta sh shot off him f from hook shotting him, and then we can stun lock him and just kill him in uh, kind of in just one cycle, which I hope I can get. So let's see. Yeah, and Spittle is also, again, going to utilize uh, Infinite Sword Glitch here to kill Phantom Gan very quickly, and also reflect the, uh, the lightning that he shoots at him. Um, so... I'm just going to get Infinite Sword Glitch off Fenton, yeah, that's totally fine. I think it's really interesting how you can use the uh, the hookshot here on the paintings. I think it's sort of intended the, to use the bow since you get that in this temple. Um, but yeah, you can just use the hookshot and it's uh, just as effective. Uh, okay, that's fine. Just going to wait for another cycle here. I just kind of turned around for some reason. Uh, that's like, it's not a huge time loss, just a couple seconds. We just need to w wait for him here again, and then there you go. Oh, I need to get, there you go. I need to get, uh, yeah, Invent Star Glitch, yep. Come on. Nice. I, yeah, nice. Nice. There's going to be another really difficult uh, cutscene skip coming up here um, for Forrest. Uh, a lot of pauses here, a lot of frame perfect uh, inputs. So Spiddle is going to really have to focus up again. Um, and yeah. Yeah, so for the next one, this is uh, pretty similar to the one in, um, in Forest te uh, Shadow Temple, I guess. We just want to do a setup and then get uh, on the edge of the warp, but this time we're going to die with a bomb instead of that uh, weird, like, um, toxin on the ground. So this is setup. I just got a, a thing called Fish Troll in, uh, in Fire Temple, which is when the fish doesn't want to join us again, but this time it was nice, so that's good. Let's see if I can get this. There you go. Three. It's two. It's one. Come on. There you go. This should work. I think this works. Let's see. And. Yes, he got let's it. go. All right, so next up is the thing I was teasing earlier with uh, Pharaoh's Wind. So um, this... 
Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, this guy can be really tough. Uh, he's he's quite the, the menacing figure. Yeah, this nice. guy used to always get me as a child, so I guess it's still something I have to work on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So next up is coming up the trick that this rod is kind of built on is called a restricted items, okay? So for restricted items, um, we're going to use Ferrous Wind, which we got earlier in our collection phase. And I, I think I'm just going to show you how, it's, uh, how to do it right when we get there. So we want to get to this uh, Gossip Stone way back in, the, in Lost Woods. Yeah, Ferrous Wind is going to be really important, especially at the very end of the run, because we need to get somewhere very quickly from a place that's kind of far away. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very important. Yeah, so we hit the Gossip Stone here. Delay the text a little bit. Okay, so what I did, just did there is I got the text on screen, and then I did an uh, item rest restriction glitch, okay? So in that glitch, you... Uh, can't use any items, but we dropped the fish while the text was on screen. So while that was, the game thinks, oh, we, you, need, you need to recatch fish, so we're not going to restrict that. And that's how we can set Ferris Wind in Lost Woods, which you're not supposed to. Um, and then we can just recatch our friend here and uh, yeah, move on. That was pretty good. Yeah. And right. uh, Spidla's one bomb here, so he's going to send it with a Hess, and uh, let's see if he can get it. Nice. nice. Yeah. So same trick as earlier, just clipping through the little well here, and uh, we're gonna go back to uh, we're gonna go back to Zora's domain. So we're gonna use uh, hover boots here to just uh, go into the waterfall. Uh, normally you would use Zelda's lullaby on the little uh, sort of uh, stone patch there, but uh, since we have hover boots and we're adult, we can just uh, go right in. Yeah, we want to get to uh, water temple, so we're actually not gonna be in. Uh in Zora's domain for a while. We just uh, we just clip out a little bit here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go here, and then I, <laughs> I just want to get into this loading zone. Uh, so how loading zones work, kind of, is uh, every loading zone you can see as child is also gonna be there as adult. They're just sometimes a little hidden like that. But if you go out of bounds and you do a couple things, you can actually just go in there, and the uh, the water is still there that's supposed to be there as child. Um, and here we want some bombs. I, ideally, I would need uh, like two more bombs just to be safe. Oh, and I, I got ah, really tough. bad RNG here. Yeah, yeah, it's a one in sixteen chance for every bush to give us a bomb. So you're kind of supposed to get two bomb drops there, which would have been nice. But uh, yeah, we got that marathon luck. So uh, we only got one, which is totally fine. I can just try this as many times as I want. Just yeah, if that's wow. a, okay. Okay. Really? Wow. That's, that is, that's terrible luck. That's, uh, that is I think crazy. it's a okay, I think it's a 92% uh, chance to get one bomb drop on these bushes, so that's awesome. <laughs> 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 Hopefully we'll get some here. And uh, the Hess coming up is really cool. It's very scenic. Uh, Spittle is going to Hess across the bridge. So there's another one. Uh, we need at least one more. There you there go. You yeah. go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's another one. Oh, okay. Nice. A generous today. Um, yeah, I love this house. All right, the, yeah, that's really cool. There you go. Oh, Aww. I dropped your this. I kind of slipped off the joystick there, but that's totally fine. Yeah, Spittle's gonna do a little, uh, little setup here to clip into the Water Temple uh, loading zone. And uh, Water Temple is notoriously one of the uh, one of the most difficult uh, temples to do casually, and um, we're gonna we're gonna make it look pretty easy here with a, a really cool trick, uh, a Hess combined with hover boots, and uh, using the platform in uh, in the Water Temple. So he got it here, and we're into the loading zone. Yeah, I guess we have a lot of bombs now because. Uh I got to farm them, but I, I still want to save here just to be totally safe with the bombs because we use a couple nice. here. Nice. And yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Just going to go get the second one. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
no problem. Yeah, they put a lot of fairies here just to... Hello? <laughs> just to... <laughs> just to fight Morpha. But yeah, so... Uh, we got all the way here. That's nice and all, but uh, how are we gonna skip the bus key, uh, Thunder? Yeah, Infinite Sword Glitch again, and we're gonna hover on the bomb and then do a ground clip. And uh, Spill's just kind of going to phase through the door, and uh, we're going to take on Morpha. Nice. That was really good. Yeah, so a little fun fact about the Water Temple that I kind of wanted to join with you guys today is um, I, uh, I think this is pretty funny. Nintendo actually officially apologized for the Water Temple at some point. So what they did is um, <laughs> what they did is they put arrows in the in the 3D version, right? So you can uh, you can just get through it much easier. Um, it helped me as a kid a lot, and, and I kind of I was proud of myself back then, so I can uh, I could solve it uh, on 3D. But then I found out how it actually is, and I yeah I just started speedrunning then I guess. Yeah, so the Morpha fight is uh, a little bit RNG based, but uh, basically Spittle is going to try to use the hook shot to get Morpha into a corner here, and then uh, do uh, do some crouch stabs. Uh, he's going to damage down here because he needs to do another uh, another cutscene skip, uh, so another another stall on the edge of the warp and uh, dying with a bomb. And uh, yeah, let's let's see how this fight goes. Okay, that's the first part. Oh. oh. That's pretty rare. Um, yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I kind of just hook shot him in a very weird way. So I got just hit by it, and uh, now, yeah, now we see more Water Temple, I guess. Um, we're not going to watch the beginning cutscene of that fight again, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's, I'm not, just gonna, it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm just going to do these uh, tricks again to get past the beginning. There yeah, you, you go. get to see this again, which is really cool. I <laughs> yeah. love that one. Oh, I actually don't need that. That's just mass memory. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this boss key skip again. So on Master Quest, it's pretty interesting. Uh, on Master Quest, there's actually just a uh, kind of a pillar to. Oh. One more. What I was about to say is a. Uh, in Master Quest, usually there's a pillar there you can hook shot, and then you can actually just side up and jump slash into the loading zone there. But that's a incredibly easy boss key skip if you if you have Master Quest and you want to try it, I guess. Okay, we got the same RNG. That's uh, not good, but that's okay. Now we actually didn't get killed by Morpha. Yeah, so Spill's gonna get him into this corner here and uh, do a uh, jump slash here, which is gonna store the power crouch stab, and uh, there, there we go. Nice. Yeah, so this is another uh, this is another tough uh, cutscene skip coming up here. So Spill's gonna have to definitely focus for this one. Yeah, it's pretty similar to the one in Forest. I mean, we just we just do a setup and then we have to do a little bit of setup, uh, another setup to die. Uh, this time we're also going to use a bomb, but it's a little easier than the Forest one. We just need to hit a couple timings. Oh wait. This, I think this is actually a little bit different because I had to re-enter this. I think I'm going to I'm going to save here again just to make sure this works. Let's see. There you go. It should work, I think. Let's see. This looks good. Waiting for the white flash. White yes, flash, let's there go. we go. Yeah, I might have uh, improvised my position there a little bit, but that's totally fine. We can just uh, have more bomb farming now. Yay! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, I could actually uh, move on with these bombs, but I, I just want to go safe because it's a marathon. Um, you usually need uh, around 11 to 13 to hit all the tricks. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get some more here. Okay. Wow. That's, that's amazing. 
There you go. I, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do one more reload yeah. just to try and get more. 16 should be fine though. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> it's cr yeah, it's crazy. Okay, there, there you go. go. Yeah, so we have a, uh, a little mega flip coming up here uh, to get back into Zora's domain and, and continue on with the run. So Spittle is going to use a bomb here to basically do a roll and then a backflip off the bomb to do a super long there backflip go, nice. right into the loading zone. Uh, so this is probably the, uh, one of the coolest, but also one of the hardest tests on the whole run. Wow. Oh, goodness. he got it. And right, nice, the, right through go. the corner right there. I think that w just made up for all the other heads that didn't it. That's <laughs> really good. All right, so now you heard me talk about earlier how the... Uh, oh. <laughs> The loading zones are just uh, the same as uh the loading zones as a adult are the, are just there are well the loading zones that are there as child are also there as adult so it seems like Jabu isn't there but the loading zone is there so we uh, we might still be able to enter him here and let's see if this works there you go and there's nice. the loading zone and we are inside Jabu Jabu all right so. And this, this dungeon is uh, a lot of, it's just a lot of movement. Um, at the end of this dungeon, we're actually going to do a trick that's called Jabu Wrong Warp, okay? So, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Wrong Warps are, uh, are possible in all the uh, child dungeons and also in the Fire Temple. Uh, that is because you get warped, warped to the overworld rather than to the sacred realm. And that makes us uh, able to Wrong Warp with it. Because we kind of manipulate the position where uh, the where we go and and then we can use that to like wrong warp there, right? Uh, wrong warp to other places, I guess. So um, what we're gonna do for a job wrong warp is a bit different than we what we saw in the other blue up uh, blue up tricks. At job wrong warp, um, we are just gonna die right at the edge of the warp in that sequence where Link turns to Ruto, and then we can actually move around while we are in that turning state with Ruto, so we get just get pulled back. And uh, we want to damage down there again and then interact with Ruto so we get the text from her. And when we get, get the text from her, we can just do a, a clip out and then um, kind of just do what we do for the other ones and just uh, void out at the same time we get warped away. It, it sounds kind of crazy, honestly, but um, you're going to see what, I, what I'm talking about in a, when I try and do it. Uh, it's also the, probably the most difficult run in this, uh, trick in this run. So, yeah, I'm... I'm uh, I hope I can get it. I'm gonna save before just to make sure, but yeah. Um, but I think leading up to that, uh, we have some time for donations. There you go. My pleasure. There's love pouring in from your community from all around the world. $15 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation from Mikey. Hey, Spittle and Thunder, Mikey here. Just wishing you all the good luck on Lake's behalf. Put this towards the drum percent. Logan sends in $75 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, so happy to be donating during the Ocarina of Time run, one of my favorite childhood games. I remember booting up my dad's save file over and over again to wander around the empty streets of Clocktown. Seeing it speed run now with my dad, a present makes the heart of the little boy who could never get past the Deku tree very happy. Good luck, spittle son. $250 from Brianger. My mom got cancer and was only able to recover because she caught it early. This one is for her. Kuburu sending in $25. I am so happy that I got home from work in time to catch this Ocarina of Time run. Was looking forward to it all day. Looking forward to all the runs tonight. Best of luck on the run, Spittle. You got this. <laughs> so I love Super Mario 64, and I love drums, my favorite instrument, but it was met just before I was about to donate, so I'm putting my donation towards the Burger King cosplay. Much love, and let's keep the donations coming and incentives met. And yes, we indeed, for uh, our run later of Sneak King, we, we, we do have uh, a donation from our runner, an incentive from our runner to dress up as the king. So please get in donations if you'd like to see that as part of that run later. $5 from Chitachi. So proud to see you live your dream. Good luck and all the love from the gang in Europe. We're all rooting from you. From your friend Kiara. $5 from Vortabo. Just like Zelda, Metroid's timeline splits. Fusion happens if you save the animals. Other M happens if you kill them. And the CDI games happen if you taunt them. 
I don't think I want to live in that timeline. Thank you very much for your generosity in this timeline. I think we have time for one more. Okay. $30 from Coco Bandit, who says, Hi from the audience. I wanted to donate $30 for my partner Gus's 30th birthday, birthday while they speedrun one of his favorite games. Lots of love. Right back at you. All right. So um, what's coming up now is... Uh, kind of a good way to skip this dungeon. Uh, you can actually also do this with a child if you, uh, or with child if you um, get just here. And what I'm what I'm about to do is first of all an equip swap that I'm going to explain in a second. But also a uh, nice little skip of this of the store. Oh, come on! If this doesn't work. I'm just going to do the save setup. Okay. Nice. Nice, there they go. Yeah, so Spittle has boomerang equipped right now, and you might be wondering, well, how how does Spittle have boomerang equipped if this is a child dungeon and it's a child only item? Well, he did a quip swap there, which is a, a frame perfect menuing trick, um, which kind of tricks the game into equipping, uh, well, a item that you can only equip as a child as Adult Link. And it's really important here because uh, we absolutely need boomerang in order to defeat Baronade here. Yeah, still, I think I still need to save here, just for safety for the Jabba wrong warp. Um, but it's totally fine, it's just a couple seconds. Um, next up is Baronade, which is kind of scary because we only have uh, half a heart right now, which we need to, again, do a little bit of a wrong warp. Right, there you go. Yeah, and uh, this boss is really difficult. I think I remember this being one of the more difficult bosses when I, uh, when I played this game a bunch casually. And uh, Spill's going to do it very quickly here uh, by using Deku Nuts in combination with the Boomerang. And yeah, so uh, again, Spittle is going to do the Jabu Wrong Warp coming up uh, after defeating Baronade. And uh, if there is any time in, during the course of this run to do a massive applause, it is after he gets this trick. That's first stop done. Nice. So again, like Spittle described before, there are sort of two phases of this uh, wrong warp. So uh, basically, he is going to run away from the warp and drop bombs in order to damage down again. And then he's going to activate the text with Rudo, and uh, we'll see what happens. There you go. Nice. to adjust this, it should be fine. This might be a frame rate. I think I got it. Let's yes. go. Yes. Let's go. First try. <sighs> yeah, you can breathe now. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Even while I was yelling earlier, I hadn't appreciated it. All right, so uh, what's coming up is the Donongo fight. This is uh, probably that's the most simple fight in the whole game. You just, you just throw a couple bombs at him and then, uh, and then jump slash. And after this is uh, probably also the easiest wrong warp coming up. So that, that fits pretty well, actually. Um, but also probably, uh, beside the job of wrong warp we uh, just saw, uh, probably also the coolest one. So what we're going to use is Pharaoh's Wind again. And let me just do this, and then you can I'm, I can just show you. There you go. That's the goal.
we go. We just activate Ferris Went here. And then right when we are about to warp away, I want to hit it. And then we are going to, and that puts us to Silver Gauntless Cutscene. Yeah. So usually you're just able to use uh, voiding out and also dying to kind of manipulate the uh, the destination you're going to get wrong warp to, right? And we used to get wrong warp to get rid of training grounds, which makes you use uh, or makes you do all the outer spirit section. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at that, so I'm very gl uh, glad we found a glitch to skip that. Um, but yeah, now we're just at, right at, at the top of Spirit Temple, and we're going to use a trick called Super Slide, not a Hyper Extreme Super Slide, but one that is, goes in a single line uh, to get, just get past this. There you go, and I think this should work. Nice, there you and, go. And uh, yeah, we're going to get Mirror Shield right here. So now Spittle is going to sort of do the Spirit Temple kind of backwards. Um, and uh, the, mirror, the Mirror Shield is pretty important for a few things, but uh, mainly for the boss fight in Spirit Temple coming up, uh, which you really do need the, the shield for. So It's kind of interesting how much we can, uh, can skip it in this game and manipulate, but a couple of bosses you just can't defeat without the antenna item. All right, so that's <laughs> backwards knuckle right there. That was such a weird camera you got there. Yeah, I, I had to like kind of find myself for a second there. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we use the up to manipulate the camera, so it saves like it saves sometimes half a second, sometimes it's just a frame. It depends on it depends on the cutscene itself. Uh, I think I want to get damage here either or get a heart. That'd be great. Okay, plenty of hearts. <laughs> a couple bombs too. That's really nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get one more bomb um, for the rest of the run. But this room is really, really cool. Uh, so basically, the enemies kind of fly around and uh, go on the opposite side of Link's position. And uh, Spittle is gonna do some movement here to uh, very quickly dispose of uh, these enemies. Yeah, that went pretty well. Uh, and next up is Statue Climb. Would you mind explaining that? Yeah, so Statue Climb is going to be another tough one. Uh, I'm not sure if Spill is going to go for the difficult strat or the easy. I'm going to try it once, yeah. Okay, so he's going to try the difficult strat once where he's not going to use Infinite Sword Glitch and just kind of walk up the side of the, ar the arm of the statue here. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty difficult. Uh, if you have Infinite Sword Glitch, you can fall off there. But I do it in runs to... Oh, come on. I guess I didn't need to get that hard. Uh, I can just damage myself down, it's all good. I Usually I get damage there, so I just get an extra hard out of muscle memory when it fails. Uh, but I didn't really fail, so I uh, get damage when failing. So yeah, so uh, Infinite Sword Glitch on this little uh, Triforce here uh, by activating Navi. Um, there you go. And well, I guess just reading the, the what the Triforce has to say. Um, but yeah, the Infinite Sword Glitch is going to help out a lot here in climbing the statue, uh, the outside of the statue. And he's going to do a series of jump slashes and side hops in order to climb. And then he's going to go through the wall here with a backflip and then equip Hover Boots and go straight into the loading zone uh, right outside of the boss door. Or uh, sorry, of the uh, bossy door. There you go. And nice. You got it. Yeah, that's with uh, with the Shadow Temple boat boat key skip. That's the hardest one to to get right. So I'm I'm really glad I got that. Uh, pretty fast. Usually you would just fall down and it takes a bunch of time. It's not really a run killer at all if you're not going for personal best uh, attempts. But yeah, it's just annoying. So I'm really glad I got that. But what's coming up now is uh, we kind of saw how Naburu got cursed and now she's in arm uh, she's in that armor. And the only way to really free her is to defeat her. So uh, we're going to do that. But we're going to do it. I'm going to try to do it in a pretty uh, specific way where we can also uh, skip the cutscene. Yeah, so uh, Spittle is going to store again that power crouch stab. And he can be in a position here and uh, crouch stabbing in a specific way that's going to avoid. It looks very close, and it is very close in terms of uh, not getting hit by that enemy. Nice, let's go. He got it. That's it. <laughs> All 
All right, we just need to get a, a little bit more damage down here for another cutscene skip that's coming up. There you go. Nice. Oh. <laughs> All right, so next up is uh, Twin Rover. And Twin Rover is kind of a it's kind of a weird boss because it's it's just an auto scroller where you have to uh, collect the shot or first you need to reflect the shots to the uh, witches so you can so you can hit them four times. Uh, how they fly around and when they shoot and all that is all RNG. So um, usually what we hope for is that they just stay in place and shoot very quickly. Um, there were a couple quadruple shots recorded, but very rarely. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much just an auto scroller. And until the second phase, uh, I think we can just read some donations here. Okay, you got it. You tell me when we get to phase two. Sure, yeah. $25 from Kitaradra. Anonymous. I mean, no comment. Wait, does that make this a comment? Hey, Link, can you go back and help me fix this donation? Ah, well. I like costumes, so here's 25 rupees towards putting Sneak King in one. Thank you so much for that. We are at almost 40% of the way towards that. Over $4,000 towards the Burger King cosplay for the Sneak King run later. $200 from Tisbit. Here's an Easter egg many fans of the Zelda series might not know. If you play the Song of Storms backwards, it sounds like the Song of Storms, except reversed. $25 from Pleasant Pheasant. Defeat all the animals, including Bowser. $150 from Sostar. Ganondorf, pitiful man. Without a strong donation, he could not save the frames. Donating during my favorite game in honor of my uncle. Best of luck to the runners, and let's get a $5 hype train going so we can reach $700,000. Less than three. $10 to PCF from Hypnotics. Spittlesan, it's been a pleasure to share the practice room with you over this week. May the monitor stay on and the run stay epic. Best of luck on this monster of a run. $5 from Prefect Pronunciation. Settle a bet. Is it Ocarina or Ocarina? Well, Prefect, English is a, is a living language, and in the dialectics of... No, we don't have time? Okay, I I'm hearing we don't have time for the rest of that conversation. Yeah, so that's second, the second phase. Um, so for the second phase, we're just going to store another jump stash here, and then we want to collect these shots. Uh, unlike the first phase, these shots are not RNG. Uh, at least the first three, right? So after the first three, uh, one second. Oh, good save. Yeah. So after the first uh, first cycle here, it's gonna it would be RNG. So we killed during first cycle. It was really nice. I would say that first phase was pretty decent RNG. Yeah, I would I would say it was. Uh, I guess you could call it average. Um, they kind of flew around, and then we I, we actually almost got, got trolled. Um, but I kind of saved it by just finding them and like aiming at them. Um, but yeah, we just we just pretty much entered the end game phase. Uh, could also call it end game when we enter Spirit Temple. But now we this was the last temple we are gonna do before trials. So. Um, yes, as I said at the very beginning, it's very uh, rare to see trials in a glitch speedrun because we just skip it or find other ways to get around them. But they have a lot of uh, very, very cool tech and very unique tech in this run that we're going to show up for the first time. So that's just going to be um, when we enter Ganon's Castle, which is going to be after this. I'm going to try to do another cutscene skip here, though. This can be a little tricky. Let's see if I got the good angle. This should work. There you go. Not just a death setup. Nice. This should work, I think. Let's see. Let's look, watch out for the white, fl white flash. And there Got you it. go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and we can just use Ferris Wind here to get past, uh, to get to the Lost Woods, 
we do that because uh, if you save and reset in the overworld or in a dungeon, I, okay, so in a dungeon you just get put at the beginning of a dungeon, like when you die. But in the overworld, what happens is um, if you save and quit, you get put to the Temple of Time. So we want to use that to go to the Temple of Time to actually finally get the light arrows here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is going to be the longest cutscene in, uh, in the game, I think. Um, yeah, I think we... I'm going to explain uh, the, the very first glitch in the trial that's coming up at the end of this uh, cutscene. And there's a little surprise coming up in a minute to people who have might not played the game. But uh, yeah, I guess we can just have a couple donations for the next minute, or, uh, around a minute. Okay, you got it. A minute of donations. Five dollars from Jansky. Always great to see this masterpiece at GDQ. Good luck, Spittlesan. Fifty dollars from Mishi. I am so proud of this community. Me and my boyfriend are watching online together, and hopefully we can travel and be in the audience soon. My boyfriend's father has been off and on battling cancer, so here's to kicking cancer's booty. Love y'all. Less, uh, less than three, Mish. $100 from Zope. Ocarina of Time is one of my favorite games of all time. I remember when I first started playing it, I had to have my dad read all the dialogue. Glad to see drum incentive was met, so this one's for Sneak King. Thank you so much for that, Zope. $25 from Dova Stars. Wanted to donate during the Zelda run in memory to my mom who was lost to colon cancer some years ago. This was one of her favorite games and a game my sister and I still enjoy to this day. Shout out and thank you to GDQ and the Prevent Cancer Foundation for all the amazing things they are doing to help those in need. Less than three. We've also got $250 from Gemins. I'm a survivor celebrating two friends in remission, but grieving the loss of a beloved family member to cancer this year. Some of you out there have appointments for scans you've been meaning to make. This reminder to get it done is for you. And thank you so much, Gemmins, for helping support PCF and Games Done Quick. $25 from Novel02. I love AGDQ. AGDQ. It's great to look forward to after the holidays every year. This year's cause is close to my heart. Both of my parents passed away from cancer far too early. Best of luck to the runners. Yeah, this is the uh, this is a big reveal in this cutscene. So Sheik was Zelda this whole time. What? <gasps> <laughs> we couldn't have gotten a spoiler warning. My I'm, goodness. I'm so sorry. Next time I'm gonna I'm gonna give a huge spoiler warning for everyone. So again, don't get spoiled how this game looks like at the end and what cutscenes come up. I should I should also be able to skip this cutscene. But what's kind of interesting about this cutscene actually is um, there was testing on doing a cutscene skip like we do for uh, for Minuit, right? So we are in, uh, in this run we are in Forest Temple and then skip the Minuit cutscene by entering the loading zone. Uh, we try to use. Um, kind of uh, cheats to get bombs right before this temple to skip this cutscene, but it didn't really work. So it's actually uh, really hard to skip this cutscene um, if you don't use uh, cell reference manipulation, I guess, where you can just uh, warp to almost everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but uh, until the end of this cutscene, I think we can have some more time for donations. It's like two, three minutes, so yeah. Okay. Well, at just about the right time, we've got $25 from Ganondorf. <laughs> Foolish Lonk, with the Triforce of Power, I am invincible. Wait, why do you keep bombing yourself? How do you move so fast while shuffling your feet? Why did you teleport to that dungeon? Why do you keep playing your sword like an instrument? <sighs> Never mind, at this rate, I'll see you in my castle in a few minutes. We've got $25 from Sarah Caesar, who says, Ganon was caught. Suavamente. <laughs> five dollars from Bradley, keeping the five dollar donation train going. Choo choo! As a Pittsburgh resident, happy to see this strong community in town. Let's defeat cancer. Seventy-five dollars from Alex R, who says, "I hope this money will help beat cancer, and I hope Spittlesand will pick up a heart to stop that dang beeping." <laughs> I don't even hear it anymore. I, I play the game so much. I yeah, it, it's just no, it's just white noise to me, honestly. I believe it. 
We've got $50 from Raza, who says, Lost my grandmother to undiagnosed breast cancer years ago. I remember fondly visiting her, her for holidays and watching her and my mother discuss strategies for a link to the past on SNES. They handed the controller to me and my brothers because of motion sickness issues going from 2D to 3D. Watching the OOT run brought back those memories. Thank you for sharing those with us, Rasa. All right, that's going to be it for the light arrow cutscene. So uh, now we are heading to Sad Ganon's castle. He actually left us a donation there. Um, yeah, we are heading to the to that cutscene that uh, for Rainbow Bridge. And actually, this cutscene for Rainbow Bridge was uh, the favorite, my favorite cutscene uh, as a child because this is sh so shiny and you, it's a kind of a reward for like all the hard work you put in with the dungeons and. Uh, it just it just looks so good, um, but I never really got to get there until I got the 3D version because I I was not good at video games as a child. So I yeah. But uh, how this bridge works um, is actually we have all the medallions, so we have nothing to worry about. But it actually only checks for the uh, spirit and shadow medallion because there's this uh, there's this kind of. Uh, how do you call it? You can do the uh, dungeons in an order where you do where you do the spirit temple f uh, first rather than the shadow temple, or the shadow temple first and the spirit temple last. So it kind of just checks for the last two, um, and the other ones you can just skip over. And uh, but we, uh, even though we didn't do that today, and uh, yeah, there's there's a uh, category that's called Ganondorf source requirement. And since you only need shadow and spirit medallion to uh, get to Ganondorf. We only get those here. I'm going to do a little bit of save here, because I only have one stick. Uh, maybe you want to explain the trick coming up now. Yeah, so Spill's going to do a trick called Quick Put Away. And um, we actually do this in Defeat Ganon as well, but um, we're going to do it here. And uh, Spill is going to hit A on a specific frame uh, and get damaged. And so that's going to sort of put away the stick, but also sort of not put away the stick. So uh, okay. we can't really see the stick in Lick's hand, but it's there. And um, he's going to break it on the wall. And that's going to give it uh, properties. And one of those properties is Din's fire. And so we're going to be able to light the torches right here with uh, the, the hammer. Yeah, really funny side effect of this trick is uh, you get a lot of scrap damage because you kind of just. I love this turn, but you just confused the game. Oh, we got the cutscene dive. Oh, nice. That was really nice. Yeah. A little bit of swag. <laughs> but yeah, so you get a bunch of scrap damage for uh, from that empty jump slash. Or oh, not empty, but from that jump slash that shouldn't be there. And um, a side effect of that is we can actually just go to the uh, trial that is right next to the forest trial, which is the spirit trial. And uh, rather than burning them, we can freeze the uh, the spikies. So we have the power of ice and, and fire in our sword now. There you go, nice. It's forest trial. One down. Yeah, one out of six. Um, so yeah, uh, after this is the water trial. Uh, we're just gonna do it in a counterclockwise order. So we start at uh, Forest and just go all the way to Spirit. Um, so Water Temple, is, that's not much to worry about there. Uh, Thunder can kind of ju just guide you through Water Trial. But what is really important is the, uh, are the Trials Shadow and Fire Trial. Because they will be very difficult. Um, for Shadow Trial, we're going to do a Hest, and I'm going to explain in a second. Yeah, so here's more red ice like we saw before, and uh, Spill's just going to use the enemy here to clip through the red ice, which you would, again, normally use uh, blue fire on to melt. Um, and then defeat the enemies through the ice, and that unlocks the door here. Uh, so we have a little uh, puzzle coming up, but uh, Spill is going to do a little jump here. Uh, it's very uh, another s sort of simple trick here, um, just an angle that he needs, and uh, just jump up here, and then use the hammer to uh, sort of do a hammer jump slash through the ice and get the switch here, and that's going to open up the door. Yeah, this red ice is way more of a suggestion that, uh, uh, than anything else for us here. We can just uh, clip through or just jump slash through. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> so for the next trial, shadow trial, um, there is the hardest test of the run, okay? So for this Hess, you have to um, you have to start at a very specific time, and then we're going to use the hover boots. And a side effect of the hover boots are, if you've ever played this game, you probably know this, but um, if you walk off the ledge, there's a timer that uh, kind of runs down for the hover boots to uh, go out, right? 
So we want to exceed that timer with uh, going on a very little platform and shell trial, and then get to the all the way to the other side of that huge gap we're gonna uh, we're gonna see now. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, I, uh, I got the wrong ESS. Okay. That was a very nice start, but I, I just got the wrong ESS. I'm going to try again. We have a couple tries here. That's all good. Oh, it's the wrong angle. If I ever run out of bombs, that's actually also a secret. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. oh, just barely. Yeah, this is a very difficult trick. It's also a huge uh, run killer. <laughs> okay, come on. Okay, this time. I'm going to make sure I am holding SS here. Good, there you go. Nice. nice. There we go. Yeah, so uh, okay. Spill's just going to use the hover boots to sort of coast along that invisible platform, and uh, we're going to get a little bit more magic here with the uh, refill or arrows. Yeah, I got arrows. I, okay. I hit the wrong pod. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much ma uh, magic in these pods. Uh, yeah. I can just go to fire trial. It's all good. I also need to, um, yeah, I need to equip fire tunic here because of the next trial. Um, there's a trick we're going to do because, um, as you could tell, we didn't get the golden gauntlets. And uh, with those golden gauntlets, you can usually just skip what <laughs> I call them uh, big rocks. So I don't know what the actual name is, but uh, these big rocks, like the these really long uh, blocks, you can just uh, can just pick up with golden gauntlets. Uh, you can also just skip them in various ways, and we're gonna do a skip here. Let me equip equip this first. Okay. So yeah, Spittle's gonna do uh, damage boost here off of the uh, the lava slug, and uh, it's a little precise with the position of the slug and the position of Link. So, all right, I'm just gonna do the oh. I think, yeah, he's going to kill me. That's, that's okay. He was in a bad position, and I didn't want to risk it, but... <clears throat> it's all good. This is like a one-minute time loss, so it's all good. Can we get a round of applause for all the amazing things Spittleshawn showed us so far? <laughs> Thank you. You're sounding a little too down on yourself, my friend. It has been fantastic to watch. I just like to hit the trials very well. I guess that's a that's a good thing I, I like to do. Understandable. I used to do a lot of uh, a lot of trials individual runs, uh, where you always grind it for sub. One second. Always grind it for sub ten, and uh, I got them at one point. But uh, yeah, now we're just gonna do this again and try again to get this slug boost here. Let's see. Okay, this is a good angle. Nice. Nice, let's go. Another Hess coming up with the Hover Boots, which uh, I'm not sure we've seen a Hover Boots Hess uh, with the Hover Boots actually equipped when we start the Hess, which looks a little bit different, but uh, sort nice. of acts the same way. Uh, but you can slide across... Uh, across the, uh, the lava there. Let's get some more magic here. There you go. Nice. That's, that's finally fire trial. Um, yeah, the two hardest trials are out of our way. Um, I mean, so far this run has been great, honestly. Um, yeah, so next up, there is another big rock we have to skip. 
And we're going to do that with another super slide. Um, this is a bit of a very, it's kind of a precise super slide because you have, a, you have to get a very precise angle in order to clip through this rock. But I, I'm just going to try and get it here. Oh, let's try again. Let's see if this works. Yes, let's nice. go. Yeah, so uh, Spittle's just going to defeat all the enemies in this room. Pretty simple. Um, and uh, that's going to give him the uh, yeah, key th to... This is, this is a very cool room. This, <laughs> this is kind of my fa one of my favorite rooms in the whole run. Because it's just so quick, you have so many enemies that you uh, kill in a very quick way. Like you saw, I lined up two, um, two enemies there and just shot one, one uh, after the other, which I think is really cool. And this next room is also very interesting. Because in this next room there, uh, what we can do is, we, if we go really fast, we can get a, a one cycle here. There you go, nice. And then, yes, All I right, got it. That's nice. like Let's the go. fastest you can do that room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really good room. Oh, let's get some more magic here. There you go, nice. Yeah, Light Trail is really exciting. It's, uh, it's probably, I think, uh, in terms of movement, it's the coolest trial out of them all. Um, but next up is the last trial, it's a spirit trial. You're not going to see me freeze those uh, spikies, unfortunately, but what I'm going to try and do is um, our only weird shot in this run, um, I'm just going to try and do it. Um, it's a very, very difficult trick with lots of uh, precise inputs. Um, I think I have one shot on this. Uh, so it's going to be right after the first room here. So let's see. Yeah, so Spittle's going to collect the, uh, the silver rupees here in this room to unlock the door. And then uh, there's going to be a couple lava slugs in the next room. And uh, yeah, he's going to go for that weird shot uh, off of the enemy. And if he gets it, it would actually be pretty crazy. Oh, oh. got it. No way. Wow. I had to do a backup there that like never works. So <laughs> that's that's actually wild. Okay, here we can just kind of roll around. Shout out to Danny B for that. Um, he he found that you can just roll up and roll down and actually just skip that whole sequence. But yeah, so what you just saw is a weird shot. Okay, that's the first weird shot you um, you saw in the whole run. And what a weird shot is is it kind of just uses damage and the first person item to and. Um, Usually you have, when you uh, use a first person item, you get into first person, you can look around and shoot. Um, but if you use that damage source, you can kind of just uh, skew that first person view into a, a wall or the ground to reach things you're not really supposed to reach. So there we could use it with a slug, which is incredibly hard. Um, to get past there and, and which of the, the torch. It only saves five seconds, but it's, it's honestly in the top three of my favorite tricks in the whole run. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really glad I got that to showcase. All right, we're going to get some, <laughs> some more bombs here from bushes. So let's hope for more good RNG here. Because so we only have three, three and I kind of want uh, 10 or more if possible. So if I got some bombs here, that would be really nice. Uh, my health, I have low health, but that just doesn't really matter. Um, we also don't really need to do another cutscene skip. Uh, so yeah, let's just try and get a bunch of bombs here. Okay, we got one. That's, that's cool. We need a couple more. And try to get two more bomb drops. If it doesn't take too long. Right after this is, uh, is a very interesting uh, has coming up. It's also one of the harder ones. Um, kind of like you saw with Jabu. Uh, how we clipped into that. Ah, oh, man. Uh, kind of what you saw with Jabu, where we could just clip into the loading zone. I'm going to do the same with, uh, with Deku Tree. Nice. Oh, nice. So yeah. I'm going to try and do the same thing with Deku, with Deku Tree here. Yeah, another, another hover oh. boot test. Um, these are pretty difficult, but uh, they kind of send Link in the same way. 
Um, so he'll shuffle forward just a little bit and then start shuffling backward. And this is a big one coming up. So Spittle needs to clip through the side of the Deku Tree and enter the loading zone as adult. He got yes, it. Let's go. Yeah, that's pretty difficult. So I'm glad I got that. Um, yeah, this is uh, the last dungeon we're going to be in. And uh, ironically, this is also the <laughs> first dungeon of the game. So we're just going to clear up the very first mission we got to. Uh, oh, OK. Uh, let's just equip Hokshali again. That kind of threw me for a loop here. But yeah, we, uh, we're just going to complete the very first mission we got kind of uh, and rescue the, the Deku tree. Um, but with that, we're going to do a pretty infamous trick, I would say, right, Thunder? Yeah. Uh, you've probably seen this one before. Uh, maybe it's uh, Child Link, but uh, another one of the probably the most famous uh, glitches in this game. Uh, it was found a while ago, and it really changed the whole aspect of, of speedrunning this game. So uh, we can do it uh, as our current form as well. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And I kind of forgot to explain, but uh, what I just did there was a, another mega flip. So we did one of those uh, very long mega flips again, or very long back flips again, to uh, clip out of that wall and kind of do what we also did in the other dungeons and just side up into the, where the loading zone for this room is supposed to be. So I just did that, and it's called 2 3 1 skip because of the scrub code. You have to do the second, the third, and the first one, right? Nice. But yeah, that's one one cycle bomber as well. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so yeah, as you might see, there's uh, there's this like stone slab behind Link right now, and uh, we need that to go away in order to do the trick that we're gonna do in order to do the wrong warp uh, because we need to enter the door uh, as the warp is taking Link away. So uh, yeah, we need to do a uh, sort of a trick with bombs here. Um, in order to uh, get rid of this, uh, get rid of this door. That should be it. This should work, I think. Let's nice. go. Okay, nice. Yeah. So that is part one, and uh, this next part is going to take us to a very special location. I think this should work. And Ganondor. there you go. Ganondor. He got... Oh. oh. Yeah, I do a little bit of a bad position, but that's okay. So he's trying to do another super slide here to clip through the wall. There you he's going to go nice. all the way down and uh, into the staircase here. And he's going to try to do another Hess to go down the staircase. There you go. Come on. Nice. Let's go. And now we are at the bottom. Yeah, at the very end. Oh. And uh, he's going to do another super slide here. And uh, sorry, uh, Zell's going to teleport and Link's going to teleport all the way up here. And uh, we're going to get a very uh, well-deserved smooch at the top of this uh, staircase here from Zelda. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, now we're at the final boss of the game. So we're just going to watch this cutscene. We're at the final boss. And uh, in this cutscene, I guess I can uh, talk about a little bit about myself. So um, I've been speedrunning this since January 2020. And now I'm third place in the category with a 144.06. I'm trying to get the world record. Uh, I'm also a full-time streamer on uh, Twitch. So if you want to check that out, it's uh, twitch.tv slash spittlesan. Um, yeah, and I guess you can also Give you a yeah, shout out. Uh, my name is uh, Thunder, Thunder underscore OOT on Twitch, and uh, I'm speedrunning Defeat Gan Noah Serem. And uh, I just want to say, like, Spittle has been working so hard for this run, like, pr pr practicing and preparing so, so well. And um, he puts a lot of effort and care and love into his speedruns and into his streaming. So if you guys haven't already checked him out on Twitch, you, you really should, because he, uh, he does it, like, pretty much every day, and he, he's amazing. So.
But yeah, so now we're wondering what's under that pile, and that, uh, yeah, it might be the final boss. Let's see. Are we still wondering? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah, so jump slashing in the cut that cutscene is good because it's gonna store uh, it's gonna store the power crouch stabs again. And uh, Gandorf is going to knock away Link's Master Sword, uh, but we have the hammer for the first phase. Uh, we're going to get the Master Sword for the second phase, uh, which is going to be a little bit more difficult because uh, Ganon is going to be spinning around uh, a little bit more quickly. So uh, yeah, the first phase should be pretty routine, but the second phase uh, is going to take a little bit of concentration. Yeah, I'm still going to focus pretty hard for the boss because we, even though this is not the hardest boss fight in, the, uh, in all of gaming, I guess, um, we still only have one and a half hearts, so if he just hits us, we might die. So I really want to focus up for this. Okay, that's first phase. There it yes, is. And that's it. Okay, so time is coming up in 20 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say time again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the it's the first uh, it's the first frame of the cutscene that activates right after the final slash. All right, and time. Okay. So I guess after just ending the <laughs> I'm so proud of you, man. Good job. Thank you. That Thank was you. that was amazing. It was such an honor to be here with you. I'm just so I'm so happy for you, man. Thank you. Yeah, so um to kind of give my final words and shout outs, uh, I want to thank Awesome Games and Quick again for this opportunity. This is awesome. This was always a dream of mine, and actually being here is, is, is honestly surreal. Um, I came out all the way from Germany. Uh, it was a pretty long travel, and this is my second time in the US, so I'm really glad I could be here. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, when I get back on Monday, I will grind again for a world record of this game. So uh, yeah, I will try to get this, and if you want, you can check that out. And also, shout-outs to my community, shout-outs to all the OT guys here. It's awesome. I'm glad you guys are here. And, uh, yeah. Do you want to say something like that? I think you wrapped it up perfectly. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>